Major Robert M. White steps from a van at Edwards Air Force Base to go aloft in the X-15 for an assault on the altitude record now held by that craft. The stubby-winged X-15 is carried skyward by a B-52 mothership. Today, it's planned to release White and his plane 45,000 feet over Nevada. Previously, the X-15 has flown 46 and 7 tenths miles high and has hit speeds of 4,100 miles an hour. Once the X-15 is carried to the proper altitude, it will be released by the B-52 and its own engine will take over for the flight into space. And the space flight it actually is. Now the moment is at hand, and the X-15 roars free on a tongue of flame. The 57,000-pound thrust of its engine is to burn for only 81 seconds, but that power is enough to shoot the Major nearly 59 miles into space. Major White experiences three minutes of weightlessness, just as did the other astronauts who made orbital and suborbital flights. And when he re-enters the Earth's atmosphere for a landing, he undergoes five times the force of gravity. Major White is now eligible for astronaut wings, awarded to all pilots who fly higher than 50 miles. His speed during the flight was 3,700 miles an hour. Not a record, but he wasn't riding a local either. Seven-year-old son Gregory was a proud witness. The saga of the X-15 and its pilots is marked at the White House, as the four men who have piloted the plane received the famed Collier Trophy, that is awarded for noted contributions to aviation. Along with Major White, Scott Crossfield, Joseph Walker, and Commander Forrest Peterson are honored for their work with the plane. Honors for men of daring who have contributed greatly to the conquest of space. Folded in the side of canister, a 13-story balloon is hoisted into space atop a Thor rocket. This is a test preliminary to orbiting another space listening post next fall, which will inflate just as this one does and then orbit the Earth as Echo 2. In this test, the shiny balloon inflates perfectly and then soars 922 miles above the Earth in a completely successful test. A true life story straight out of Horatio Alger comes to a climax with the announcement that Mayor Anthony Celebrezzi of Cleveland is to be the new Secretary of Health, Education and Welfare. His rise from newsboy to a national political figure has been phenomenal. He was elected Mayor of Cleveland five times before being tapped by the President to succeed Abraham Ribicoff in the cabinet post. Mr. Ribicoff will campaign for a Connecticut Senate seat. Queen Elizabeth sails for Europe with a distinguished passenger. Former President Eisenhower is making his first trip abroad as a private citizen since 1929. And he says this is going to be a fun trip. The general is accompanied by his wife and their two grandchildren, Dwight David, 14, and Barbara Ann, 13. Mr. Eisenhower will make but one official appearance. He will address an international teachers conference in Stockholm. In a shipboard interview, the general says he hopes to carry abroad the message that the United States wants peace, but will not be pushed around. A bon voyage to Mr. Eisenhower, private citizen. At Tlemkin in northern Algeria, near Oran, the new nation's vice premier, Ben Bela, has set up heavily guarded headquarters in an old resort hotel. Ben Bela is feuding with Premier Ben Kada, a feud that exploded into an ever-widening rift when the Premier fired three high army officers. Ben Bela wants them returned to power, and he is favoring a one-party rule, something most Algerian leaders fear. A secret council is trying to resolve the differences. Mm -hmm. 